guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my review on the Danessa Myricks Lightwork 3 palette. So if you want to see my thoughts and really just looking at the swatches because... Mm, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I actually did cover this in a live yesterday. So if you want to see my true first impressions, just playing around with the palette, I did that live. So check it out. I did kind of give my opinion, but I'm really excited to come back with this review because one, it's gonna be much better quality. You're really going to be able to see the true colors of the palette, which is one of the most important reasons that I wanted to actually film a review as well as the live. And then I'm going to create a cool look. I'm, I'm thinking. I already have it kind of in my head. I'm really excited. But this palette, it's not even really going to be so much about application. I want to show you swatches and just hopefully inspire you and help you figure out different ways to use this palette. Without further ado, let's get into the major details of this palette. Now, Danessa Myricks did say that this was created in very limited batches. It was originally available on the Sephora website. I think they sold out pretty quickly and it's no longer on the website, but you can still get it at... Danessa Myricks last time I checked and you can still get it at Beautylish. I ordered from Beautylish. If you order from Beautylish, you actually do get a mini Lightwork Volume 3 palette in here, which just contains four shades that are in the big palette, but it's a great gift to a friend. I'm actually putting this in one of my first giveaways for my membership. And I believe Danessa Myricks website actually also ended up gifting everybody who ordered a free mini one of that as well. So that's really great, a nice little perk. What originally drew me to reviewing this product was one, of course, promos and marketing on Instagram for this. Out of this world, galactic, very Pat McGrath-esque, but even a little bit more elevated if you ask me. That's just Danessa Myricks style, but it, I saw one swatch and I needed to have it. And two, it actually is the same price point as a Pat McGrath Mothership. It is $125, so I needed to see what's up. If you don't know my backstory, on the brand. I love Danessa Myricks. I have seen her and learned from her. I have sat in on one of her class and demos in person uh, back in the day when <laughs> makeup shows were a thing. So I admire her so much as an artist. Her style is very editorial. It's not necessarily ready to wear kind of, I don't know why I'm talking like fashion, but it's not ready to wear style makeup. It's like really runway photography kind of looks. But I haven't been the biggest fan of her products. I've had some products that I really do like from the brand, but there also is a lot of products that I don't like. Her makeup brand is not very traditional. It was popular on the market. She plays a lot with different textures and consistencies that aren't normally popular. Like she was using creams long before it was popular, creams on the eyes everywhere. Her brand definitely follows her style of makeup, which I think is awesome, but I will admit, not my style of makeup, so I haven't really loved some of her products, but I I really like this. I, I mean, I already know I like this. So let's go over what the packaging looks like. It's gonna come in, not this snake, I don't know what this pattern is, but I'm gonna say it's like a snake skin style box. It actually feels really good. And if you do need to look at the ingredients, they're going to be right here for your convenience. So you have the total weight up here, the name of the colors, Please note it says keep out of eyes. It's one of those palettes, so <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my eyes though. And then something that I did note is that this palette, made in China, and it's $125. That being said, I know there is a supply chain issue right now. And this palette does contain textures that are very, very expensive to make. So I definitely see why this is more of a pricey palette. But it's $125. So, you know, use your best judgment. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the palette itself. It is quite sturdy packaging. I actually really like this. I think it doesn't feel like it's gonna break. It's a little bit on the bulkier side. I don't know, it, I felt like it didn't need to be so thick, but I, it's not that big of a deal, it's fine. And it feels really sturdy, which I like. It does contain a nice mirror. And of course we have the shades. So the finishes of here, I'm gonna get two gel formulations, which are very very interesting i'm not personally the biggest fan of these but we'll play around with them today five multi chromes so it's going to be these three down here and then these top two this is a 
powder cream and this is a powder cream though I will say these two do not feel like the same formula at all but she describes them as a powder cream this one's more like a duochrome if you were to ask me you have a pressed glitter and then you have four holographic powders so those are the formulations I'm going to zoom you in we're gonna turn the lights down and we're going to swatch each of the shades this is very important just brace yourselves brace your wallet because this portion might make you want to spend $125 on this palette I'm not warnings. I'm actually going to go by formulation. So let's start off with the two duochrome gels. So Polaris is an opalescent yellow to seafoam green duochrome gel. You can see the duochrome much better on my finger than you can in the pan. You can see it kind of when I shift it. And then here is Space Suit, which is a fiery coral, a blood orange, and honey duochrome gel. I just want you to see like kind of what the texture would look like. So let's do Polaris first. Oh, how gorgeous is that? And it almost goes to sheer on a certain turn. And then here is Spacesuit, which is a little bit more sheer. But I will say in person that Coral is a lot more fiery and orange. And then here, I'm putting my phone up so you can kind of see. Yeah, so those are the two duochrome gels. I'm not too crazy about them. I'm gonna use them as a highlight today. If you use them on the eyelids, just be aware they will probably most likely crease. I actually put some of Solar Rain, which I'm gonna show you, over spacesuit. And this is a way that one, it intensifies the color. And it's gonna help it last longer, but these gels will crease. Again, Danessa Myricks, it's not always about wear time. She's very editorial runway stuff, photography, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's get into the multi-chromes. This part's really gonna make you wanna buy this palette because it's insane. So let's start off with Galaxy right here. And then we have Martian. We'll do these two first. Galaxy, look at that shift, and Martian. Put a little bit more, and you can see they're very silky consistency, similar to a feeling of like a Davina Multichrome, if you're familiar. So Galaxy is a multichrome pigment, pigment with smoky teal, green, and violet shift. You can see how long that is traveling on my arm. Incredible formulation. I'm very happy. And then Martian is a multichrome pigment with an icy blue, green, lilac, and plum brown shift. So it almost has that gray base to it. I personally don't think I own a multichrome that is this shade. I definitely own one that's like Galaxy, but take a look at these shifts. We're going to the next multichromes, which is Aurora, Gaia, and Solar Rain. So we have Aurora, Gaia, and Solar Rain. How to see all the shifts are really evident on my fingers, which is crazy. Aurora is a electric plum, fuchsia, and olive green shift. Gaia is copper, bronze, and emerald shift. And then Solar Rain is pearl, peach, key lime, and a platinum shift. So Solar Rain, I feel like, doesn't look very strong, but it looks much stronger and shiny in person. But, I mean, you can see those shifts. It's really incredible. So these bottom five are the multi-chromes. I'm going to put my flashlight a little bit closer. You can see the shifts a little bit better that way and the dimension of the shadows. Next formulation I'm going to do are the powder creams. So there are two here. We have Soul, which is a khaki gilded gold powder cream. So these definitely feel a little bit more dry and not quite as silky as the multi-chrome formulation. They feel more like a true powder eyeshadow. And then Black Hole. So this is the only matte shade in this palette. And it feels a little bit creamier than Soul. They feel like two completely different formulations. I wouldn't say that they are the same formulation. I don't know why she calls them that, but anyways, I'm not the expert here. So Soul is Gilded Khaki Gold Powder Cream. This is really gorgeous. I know a lot of you are going to like this shade. That one's one of the more wearable. And then the black is really nice. I played with this yesterday a lot in almost all of my looks. It really is an amazing, amazing shadow. So those are the powder creams. And then we're going to go over the holographic powders. These aren't going to look quite as exciting, but I'm going to show you how you can use them in different ways. So we have Golden Eclipse, Strawberry Moon, Spring Equinox, 
Hearts and Blue Moon. So these are the ones that are going to be more likely used on the face as highlighters. Think Kat Von D Alchemist palette, ABH. They used to have some holographic highlighters. It was very big at one point. So that's what these are. They definitely are drier and more powdery. You can just see that within the swatch. Golden Eclipse is a Sunset Peach holographic highlighter. Spring Equinox Sage Green holographic highlighter. Blue Moon is a Glacier Blue Oh, I just totally messed this up. Sorry. <laughs> Golden Eclipse is a Sunset Peach Holographic Highlight. Strawberry Moon is Pink Lilac. This is Spring Equinox. It's the Sage Green Holographic Highlighter. And then this is Blue Moon, which is a Glacier Blue Lavender Holographic Highlighter. And in my live last night, a number of you were like, boring. But I am going to tell you, they are not boring. I'm going to give you a few examples. You want to use these straight like this as highlighters on the face or in the inner corner. But you can use them all over the lid. Oh, but here I am with the sweaty upper lip. <laughs> Ignore that. But you'll see. You'll see. And then the last one I'm going to swatch is Orion, which is an aquatic turquoise pressed glitter. Yeah, I mean, I would suggest if you're going to use a pressed glitter, use it with a glitter glue. But I know many of you guys don't like pressed glitters, but it's only one. At least this whole palette isn't pressed glitters, but it's pretty. So these are the swatches. I mean, you can't tell me this palette isn't incredible. Now, I know Danessa Myricks is an indie brand, but it, this has hit the mainstream market with it being at Sephora and Beautylish. So I have to say, I've never come across a palette like this at all in the mainstream market. It's definitely one of a kind. And one thing that you do need to keep in mind with this palette is you're not going to be able to get a bunch of looks with this palette. I really don't suggest mixing a ton of colors. It's not as versatile as it seems as an all-in-one palette palette. It's not. It's just a collection of products that are not typical to the market that you can go and grab for. Now, don't get me wrong, you can create looks with just this palette, but there's only one matte in here, and it is a matte black. And you probably are going to need more than that to create a lot, a variety of looks. It's just great to have an all-in-one palette that contains all the multi-chromes, shifty, holographic shades. If you're going for a galactic look like that, you know it's going to be this palette. So I want to show you how to use the holographic powders other than just highlights. So I'm going to re-swatch them on my arm and I'm going to show you how to use them. So I have the holographic powders swatched on their own. And what you're going to do to get more versatility out of these holographic powders is to put them over any matte base. Black is going to make the shadows be the most unique, but for example, Spring Equinox is a green. If you put it over a dark green matte shadow, it's going to look really, really cool. But I'm just going to use black for example. I'm just going to put them right on top. So this is another way to use these shadows. You can see the black base is bringing out the true color. So put a black base all over your eyelid, and then these shades can certainly be used for a cool effect on the eyes. So it's not just limited to what you see here, which isn't as exciting. You can really make the colors pop and you can use whatever base color that you want. You know, this is an artistry palette. You need to think a little bit more outside of the box in ways that you can layer these. Take advantage of the gel. Take advantage of the holographs. Take advantage of the multigrams. Take advantage of that matte black. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do was compare different multi-chrome formulas so that you can kind of get an idea of what you're working with in terms of formulations. If you're not familiar with the indie makeup market, technically, Danessa Myricks is an indie brand, but I'm just going to refer to indie brands as the ones that are not sold in Sephora and Beautylish. So that's going to be Terra Moons, Cleona, Davina. I have some of those to compare. And then I also am going to show you a Natasha Denona duochrome and a Pat McGrath duochrome, just so you can see how they would compare. So I stated earlier that Galaxy, I think, was pretty dupable in my collection. So I'm going to start off by showing you what I have that's close to Galaxy from Danessa Myricks. So Danessa Myricks Galaxy is going to be the one on top. In terms of my individuals, I have a Cleonade Cosmetics Shadow. And Cleonade is one of the more expensive indie brands and this is the shade oculus and I just want you to see how the formulations compare 
can tell you right now, I prefer the Clignonade. It's creamier, it's smoother. I think it's gonna travel further on the ham, but, and it looks like there's a bit more dimension, but they're the exact same color. And Danessa Myricks is a pretty close match. We also have from Terra Moons Cosmetics, this is Looking Glass. It's a little bit drier feeling than the Danessa Myricks. Still think Cleonad is the queen in this one, but the Terra Moons is quite comparable to the Janessa Myricks. These two are a little bit closer. Terra Moons is a little bit more affordable than Cleonad, if you're not familiar with indie brands. And then we have from Divina, this is Polaris. And I will have links down to all these indie shops below. And I would say Divina definitely feels the most similar to Janessa Myricks in how silky they are, but... You can see Cleonad maybe has a little bit more glitter, but all four of these kind of look the same. I would say Danessa Myricks is the weakest, but it's not by too much. So this way you can directly see the comparison of the formulations. Also, so you can compare, I didn't have a similar color to Galaxy in my Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath collection because those are a little bit more mainstream and I've said in my reviews before that these are definitely more toned down in the mainstream market. They are. Indie brands is where you have to go for the good stuff but Aurora is the one that is more dupable here. So this is Aurora from Danessa Myricks and I'm going to show you it directly compared to Sextra Terrestrial from Pat McGrath. This is the only duo chrome shade, multi chrome shade in this palette but just so you can see I do prefer the Danessa Myricks formulation. The Pat McGrath is a bit more toned down. The Danessa Myricks gives you a little bit more oomph, but Pat McGrath has a really good multi chrome formula, but it really doesn't compare to the indie brands. And then the Natasha Denona released some duo chrome, trio chrome palettes. These really don't compare, if I'm being honest, but color flips kind of similar. This feels, I'm sorry, these shadows make the Natasha Denona formula seem a little bit pathetic, but it is more of a toned down duo chrome formulation. So if you like more toned downness, that Natasha Denona trio chrome might be your best bet. But that's just how the formulas are going to compare. I do think Danessa Myricks has a really, really good multi chrome formula, but those individual brands that I named are a wee bit better. They really are. Okay, so with that all being said, I think I've hit the major points that I wanted to hit in terms of swatching and comparing. I am going to do half of my face. Uh, it's time to create a look, so I'll be right back. Okay, not to toot my own horn, but once we get liner and lashes on, you're gonna be obsessed with this look. I mean, just front of the light. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna put on my Vizzy Art eye primer to start. So yesterday I did do a look without using any other colors from any other palettes. But honestly, like I said in the beginning, I do feel limited and I feel like I want to grab into other palettes to really get creative with looks. So that's what I did for today. I actually just pulled out my Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette because honestly, I love the colors of the mattes in here and I feel like they really bring out the tones of typical duo chromes. So this is a great palette to pair with the Danessa Myricks palette. Like look at these two together. Only thing's missing is a blue. We need a blue in here, but anyways. So I use the shade Redox right here, which is a really dusty lilac purple shade, and I'm going to put this all along my crease. And so this is just going to bring out the purple tones in the multi-chromes that we're going to use. And I have not gotten enough use out of this Natasha Denona palette, so I'm very happy to be able to bring it out for today's look. This palette is so unique. The multi-chromes are a little disappointing, but the mattes in here are so unique. I don't have another palette that contains mattes like these, so... That's why I like this palette. Anyways, next we're gonna take manganese. You can see we did a halo eye, kind of. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and put the darker purple in the inner and outer corner. Then I'm also gonna run that pretty close to the lash line, like so. And this is really it for the Trio Chrome palette. I only borrowed two colors from there just to lay down the foundation for the look that we're going to do. And normally with multi-chromes, I like to let one kind of stand on its own, but for the sake of today's look, I did two multi-chromes because I thought it would be fun. Okay, so we have a good foundation. If there was one matte that Danessa needed to put in this palette, it had to be black. This is gonna be one of my most used colors in this palette just because every 
look that I envisioned. Black really amps up the drama and really amps up the shifts. So I am really going to build up the black and we're gonna go back in a lot. So just be ready for that. And then don't forget all along the lower lash line, we want that depth. And this is a refer brush by the way. So really buff out the smoke. I always create the ugliest looks on lives. <laughs> I don't recommend going to my live yesterday and copying the looks. I don't know, I don't do good under pressure, but when I'm sitting and filming is when I come up with my best looks. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that original purple color that we use, Redox, from Natasha, because I really want it to peek through. Okay, I'm going to take a flat shader brush. This is a refer number 28. And I'm gonna start off with Aurora. So we're gonna start off with placement. It's not gonna look good right now before we blend, but Aurora is gonna go pretty much over the black, just like this, and then we're gonna carry it kind of higher. So again, we're just working on placement right now. Don't worry too much about the blend. We're still leaving that center shade, but this is going to be the outlying colors here, and they're going to be protecting Martian. So Martian is this shade right here, and I'm putting Martian right in the center, and that's gonna bring in a fun green element. So now we're gonna work on kind of fusing the shades together. This might take some time. Don't worry about the top, we'll get there. But we'll go into Martian, blend the outer lines. I'm going into Aurora, fusing them together. And you can even use your finger. That's gonna help too. Then to really keep the drama up, I'm putting more of black hole right on top of the multi-chrome. They are going to really blend and fuse together well this way. I'm taking Aurora, which is the outer color, running this along the whole lower lash line. And then I'm wiping off my brush and then we're gonna go in with the center color, Martian, kind of repeating what we did. And then the black matte shade in the corners. And then when it comes to this top part that I told you not to worry about, take a clean blending brush, make sure there's no color on it, and just blend those edges. And then you can even go into that original transition color that we placed down, the Redox shade, and use that to kind of help. So cool, I love this look. Okay, and then we're going into one of the holographic powders. I'm going to use Spring Equinox, which is the green shade. Put this in the inner corner. I put it under my brow bone. I don't really like the way that that looks because it's a bit too glittery in my opinion compared to everything else that we have going on. It's a bit overwhelming, but I did it on that eye. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna place it right at the base of the center of the eyelid for a little extra glimmer. Not that we needed any, but it's just gonna tie elements of the look together. And then don't forget, just a little dot of Spring Equinox. And guys, this is without mixing medium. If you really want something crazy, use the mixing medium. So for highlight, I wanted to show you what Polaris would look like. This is the gel formulation, and I'm not in love with using this as a highlight in terms of like wearing this out in public, but this definitely for those more editorial looks, for photography, videography purposes is really neat, but it is a little chunky, so you do have to kind of work it out and really push in. I would prefer this probably on the eyelids, but it can be workable as a highlight, but it does take some working out. It's not disrupting anything underneath, and that's how that would look. Really neat, I am gonna push it in with a sponge. Not my favorite way to use this probably, but it can be used in this way. And then the last step to this look, I'm using a blinged brush F17. We're going into Spring Equinox once again, and this is going to be the holographic highlighter to pull the whole look together. And these look beautiful on just bare skin, like not with a cream or gel underneath. If you use these holographic highlighters, they're much more beautiful than I thought they were going to be on their own. So I really like these and kind of blend it in with the eye look. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. I'm actually going to tone it down a little bit <laughs> just because I am a wearable makeup kind of person. So I'm like, whoa. But I'm going to do lots of black eyeliner, big fat lashes and prepare to be amazed. I will be right back. All right guys, so here is the final look. 
I love it. I think it is so fun and I think there's a lot more elements I could have brought in like some jewels and stuff to make it even more fun but nonetheless I'm very happy. I wish I was wearing something different that like matched this but anyways here is the final look. All the details of everything else that I'm wearing like lashes, lips, all of that will be in the description box but let's get into my final thoughts on this palette. Overall price aside I really like this palette. It is so fun. It's so unique, but there's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind if you are considering this palette. Number one, $125 is a lot, but the more that I've used this, the more I'm kind of backing up this price. I feel like these types of textures and duochromes and shifty shades are all very expensive to formulate. So I think there's something to be said about having a bunch of that all in one palette. There's a reason why shadows of these textures are not in a lot of palettes and have not hit the mainstream market. So for me, this palette is extremely unique in my collection. However, if you are an indie brand collector of single shadows from the brands that I've mentioned, and there's plenty of more, if you have those collected, this palette is definitely not going to be worth it to you. You probably already have shades like this in your collection. I don't find the multi-chrome shades to be unique. All brands that create multi-chromes have these chrome shifts in their collection. However, if you don't have a lot of multi-chromes in your collection, you haven't dove into those indie singles, this is a great starting point. And for that reason, I think it's worth it because the individual shades are not cheap from these indie brands. So I think this is a great starting place. Overall, I'm very happy with this. I think it's fun for me. I think it's worth it. Indie collectors, it's not gonna be worth it for you. And you're also gonna say, oh, this formula is not as good as my Divina Shadows. Like that's very true. These are not up to that level. But one thing you also want to consider is accessibility. Now she did say that this was created in limited batches, but let's be honest, Danessa Myrick's Beauty is a lot easier to get a hold of than Terra Moon's Shadows. A lot of these indie brands have long wait lists, pre-orders, a month plus for the order to be fulfilled, shipping restrictions, ordering for from indie brands, it's not an easy thing to do. Whereas with the Danessa, you can just order it off of Sephora or Beautylish. For that reason, this is a lot easier to get a hold of as well. It's a great introduction to multi-chromes. Just keep in mind, you know, this isn't necessarily what I would say is an all-in-one palette. I would dig into other palettes, but there's something to be said about having these shifty duochrome shades all-in-one palette that you can reach for and pair with other palettes. And I'm very happy with this. I really like it. I think it's very good quality. And if you are interested in this, I do recommend it. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a fabulous weekend.